Okay, this is the M1 paper from October 2020. It's question number two. Uh, it's a kinematics question. We're going to be using SUVAT. Uh, I think there's a velocity time graph at the end there. But in particular, this is vertical motion that we're going to be considering. Uh, let's have a read through of the question. It says we've got a small ball thrown vertically upwards uh, speed 14.7 from a point that's 19.6 above the ground. Uh, ball is modelled as a particle moving freely under gravity. And then lots of different questions. So before I get on to the questions, what I tend to do with these diagrams is I just draw myself out a quick sketch that I can keep referring back to if I need to. And in this particular situation, I know that u is equal to 14.7 there. It's thrown up with a speed of 14.7. And if it's 19.6 metres above the ground, then that distance there, that height there, is 19 Point six meters. Right, what do they ask me first of all? They say find the total time from when the ball is thrown to when the ball hits the ground. So I'm going to be considering that as my journey and I can just do SUVAT for that situation. So SUVAT, what have we got? We're hoping to have four of the variables being involved and that we know three out of the four of them. Right, so just be careful here. Um, I'm going to say that that's zero, isn't it? That that line there is zero. So it means that S isn't 19.6. It's going to be minus 19.6. It has ended up below where it started off from. And we've got to take that into consideration. U is equal to 14.7. So by definition here, I've taken up upwards as being positive. If you want to write that on to help you out, you can do. Um, v, the final velocity, what are we looking for? We're looking for the total time. So V is not involved in this question at the moment. A, if I'm taking upwards as positive, then A is going to be minus 9.8. It is a deceleration. It is slowing the ball down and then obviously getting it to go um, downwards below the initial point uh, after some time there and t t is what we're looking for so yeah i've got my classic situation one two three four variables three of which i know so what formula connects s u a and t well if you've done any work at all on kinematics this shouldn't be a problem to you this is going to be whoops this is going to be s equals u t plus half a t squared and then we're simply going to put everything in. So I've got minus 19.6 is equal to ut, 14.7t, minus, because of the minus 9.8, minus 4.9t squared. Turn that into a quadratic, 4.9t squared, minus 14.7t, minus 19.6 equal to zero taking everything over to one side and now with this one you can um solve it using the quadratic formula it does actually factorize because 4.9 actually comes out of all of those now i wouldn't expect you guys to see that um i'd expect you to probably use the formula but if you didn't and you factorized using um 4.9 dividing by 4.9 we actually end up with that but you, you can still use a formula it'll still work out i'm going to get t minus 4 t plus 1 equals 0 here so i'm going to get t equals 4 or t equals minus 1 you'd get that by putting everything into the quadratic formula okay most of you just jump past this next 30 seconds of the video but i'm just going to quickly explain what's actually going on here with t equals minus one for everybody else that's the answer okay t equals four we can't have negative time but just for those people who are interested in this sort of thing not going to help you out with the exam but this t equals minus one is where the maths doesn't understand what's going on and so the maths considers that journey there what would i do what would i have to set off at at this point here, 
if by the time I got to there, I was traveling at 14.7, which would then mean that by the time I got down there, the rest of the journey would have taken place. Well, that would have happened at t equals minus one, one second before we got to this point here. So as I say, it's only a matter of interest. Most of you shouldn't worry about that at all when we're looking at it. And we can just carry on with the rest of the question here. Um, yeah, so moving on, what I need to do, I need to make absolutely certain, even if I do understand that bit, that t equals four seconds is my answer. That's not valid for our set of circumstances here. So on to part B, what does part B say? Part B says, can we find the speed of the ball immediately before it hits the ground? So yeah, absolutely no problem at all. I'm still on this journey here. So I can actually just use the same SUVAT as I've got up here at the top. If I had all the time in the world, I would now restart and actually do V with those three. And I do V squared equals U squared plus two AS. In an exam, I think I need to be a little bit more realistic here that if I was doing this under exam conditions where speed actually is quite important, then I'm more likely to turn to V equals U plus AT. I've got everything that I need here and V equals U plus AT is just gonna be a bit quicker than V squared equals U squared plus two AS. So it's that. Minus if I put everything in here, that which works out to be uh, negative 24.5. Or in other words, negative 25, because um, I'm always going to round to two significant figures. I took uh, G as being 9.8, and then I'm going to call that 25 meters per second. The reason it's worked out to be a negative is because I took upwards as positive they're asking for the speed of the ball. So that means I don't need to worry about anything like that. Okay, part C, the total distance traveled by the ball when it is thrown to when it first hits the ground. Right, well now I need to be very careful about what I do here. If I consider this same journey here, well then I already know if I put T equals four, I'm going to get minus 19.6. That doesn't help me. Well, it helps me a little bit, but it doesn't tell me how far the ball has travelled. So what I now need to do is to actually consider two separate journeys here. I now need to consider from there to there, <clears throat> excuse me, work out what that distance is. And then once I've got that distance, the total journey is that distance plus that distance there. So that's easy to work out only once I've found what's going on on that journey there from the start off point, but up to the maximum height that it reaches here. And hopefully again, most of you will know that's gonna be when V equals naught. So I'm gonna consider that journey for part C. Let's get on and do all that and then we'll explain to the examiner uh, what we're doing. So again, if I was explaining to the examiner, I might just put this in. It doesn't take me any time at all, does it, to actually do that and say that's what I'm now considering to start off with. So let's do SUVAP for that. So what have I got here? S is what I'm trying to find. U is 14.7. V is going to be equal to naught. The acceleration is going to be minus 9.8. I'm still taking upwards as being positive here no interest in t whatsoever so my classic um four variables here only one of which i'm interested in the other three i've got so s u v and a again i'm assuming you guys have all done your revision so v squared equals u squared plus 2 s that's going to be nothing that's going to be 14.7 squared uh it's going to be plus two times minus 9.8 times S. Again, another little hint here. I can see this is gonna work out now. I know S should work out to be positive and because of the negative bit there, that is all gonna work out. In fact, I'm just gonna put it in. Take a long time with this video so far. If you 
put all that in, S works out to be 11.025. So now remember what I just said, we want the distance traveled, which is 11.025, another 11.025, and the original height there of 19.6. I don't need to explain that necessarily to the examiner. Get rid of all of that, uh, as long as I say it here for myself. So total distance traveled, works out to be equal to 11.025 plus 11.025 plus the original 19.6, which gives me 41.7. And as with all the other questions so far, two significant figures will be 42 metres. OK, well, that was part C, yeah. OK, part D then. Sketch a velocity time graph for the motion of the ball when it is thrown to when it first hits the ground. State the coordinates of the start point and the coordinates of the end point of your graph. OK, so, yeah, this sometimes confuses people who are not as strong as kinematics as they should be. This is really straightforward because throughout the whole of this motion, we've just had a constant acceleration, haven't we? The constant acceleration has been a deceleration of minus 9.8. But if we've got a velocity time graph and we have a constant deceleration, then we're just going to have that. Okay, it, what, what happens with this thing? Um, I know what it started off at. It started off at 14.7 meters per second. At the top point reached, when time was, uh, we don't know, I, I can't put that value on, when time was equal to a certain thing here, that corresponds to this point up here. And then at the end of our motion, we know, sorry, after four seconds, we know that it was going at a speed of minus 24.5 here. So velocity time graph, let's get rid of that bit there. That's all the information we need. Don't, don't, don't try and put too much information on. Don't, don't go back now and spend any time working out what that is. They only asked me really to talk about those two points there, which I've done. So that's the velocity time graph finished. And that's the end of that question. Hopefully that all makes sense.